Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at the fourth installment in the Machine Krieger in SF3D Archive book series. I love this series. They're really, really great if you guys are fans of Machine Krieger and if you're watching this video, then you probably are. I love this series so much that for this volume, I got an extra copy to give away to one of you guys. Now, all you need to do to enter in the giveaway, obviously, watch the video, enjoy the video, but you just need to leave a comment down in the comment section below. And let me know what it is that you guys like about the Machine Krieger series, whether you could like share a story about, you know, what got you interested in the first place, what was your first exposure to the Machine Krieger property, or what is it that you like about the model kits in general, or the story, or is there a particular model kit that you particularly like? You can let me know something along those lines. Share an interesting Machine Krieger story down in the comment section, and then I'll choose one of those to be the winner for this extra version, but this is an extra thick uh, installment in the series, so it's a really, really great book. Very happy to share it with you guys in today's video. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay guys, so as we're getting into the book, first thing I wanna make clear is we're definitely not going to look at every single thing in here because this book is fat. This is definitely the largest of the series so far. I believe this is the final one, volume four here. We've got 223 pages of stuff here, over 200 pages. So it's definitely a lot of stuff in here. I'm not gonna go through every single page with you guys. There's a ton of stuff. If you guys have seen my videos, on the volumes one through three that I've done in the past. If not, you can go back and check those out. But if you guys have seen those, you know kind of what to expect in these. Basically, this is gonna go through time, through a certain time period, let's see. If we check out our contents page here, it looks like it's starting from June 2013 and going all the way here until December 2015. So I don't know, maybe there will be another volume after this because I mean, obviously it's been seven years since 2015. So maybe there's gonna be another volume for 2015 or well, the beginning of 2016 until currently. I don't know, possibly, I'm not sure. But anyway, here's what the front of the book looks like here without the jacket. With the jacket, we've got some advertisements here for some other Max featured books there. This SAFS book is the one that's still on my personal wish list, but uh, until that time. Anyway, just a beautiful book on the cover here before we dive into it. This release is also part of the 40th anniversary, so maybe that's one reason why this is also larger and a special edition here. Maybe just because it's the 40th anniversary, so it's packed with even more stuff. We got some beautiful works and there's just, like I said, a lot of stuff in here. So we're not gonna get through everything. Here we got a 1 16th, oh, it's the 1 16th uh, scale SAFS raccoon and raptor. So one of the things that's great about these books is that you get a lot of behind the scenes stuff and obviously it's all in Japanese. So all the text, unless you go through and actually translate everything. And in this one, like with how much stuff is in here, that'd be quite a lot of translating. So there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff, but there's also just tons and tons of reference images for lots of different builds. I took a quick look through this and it looks like a lot of the builds are either from Koyokama-san or Max. Uh, but here's one from Link, for example. So there's builds from a lot of different people, but primarily it's either going to be uh, Koyokama or Max for the builders, but there's just so many builds. So that was one thing like, I just kind of flipped through it briefly uh, as soon as I got it and I was just realizing, just thinking like how many builds are in here. So like just even in this short period of time, well, it's like a, a two year stretch that's covered in this book, but there's a lot of builds. I'm not sure if all of the builds featured in here are done within that time or if like some were done, you know, either before or after and then just included in the book because they deal with the kit in question. So like this particular section here about the Kyclop, if there this build in particular maybe was done before 2013, but because this section of the book is dealing with the Kyclop, they included it here. So I'm not sure. But anyway, there is just so many models in this book. So that's one thing that's really great about it is just all of the reference material. The Lunagans, one of my favorite designs, I have to say, from all of Machine Krieger. I uh, love this one. Still not built mine yet though, so I definitely need to build mine up. But another thing that immediately stood out to me was some really nice like space diorama builds here, like this one in the uh, like a hangar scene here. How you have some suits and everything like all in this hangar scene. So that's really cool done here with the H hangar and octagon sets. Those are from, well, Wave of course, right? Yes. So then you have some crew down over here. 
some decal sets, and yeah, as far as I know, this this book doesn't come with any decals. Yeah, no, uh, that would have been cool. I don't know, maybe if this would have included like a decal set to include with the book as, again, just like part of the 40th anniversary. Might have been nice, but uh, can't really complain too much considering how much stuff is in here. The fact that it didn't include decals, not too disappointing. It's really nice. Crote or crete, I, I guess is, I, I believe is how it's sometimes called. This one is actually 1 12th scale, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so this is larger. This is not the 120 scale kit. This is actually 1 12th scale, so larger, and it looks really cool. But it's interesting how much it looks like. Here's a picture here with the 120 scale version, it looks like. And it's interesting, you know, just how similar they are, just in terms of all the details and everything. It's not like it's adding a bunch of details to the 1 12th scale version. It's just an exact copy sized up. Uh, here we got a very nice Oscar, a design, not one of my favorite designs, but uh, I always love how these are painted just because the big wide surface here of the tank always just looks really cool uh, when it's all painted up. It's just a really nice big surface. Some very cool painting on there and a nice little uh, illustration down here in the corner. This build as well is in a nice little diorama scene here, how you have like a, a maintenance kind of bay set up here for it just with some kind of relatively simple parts, but then once you add in a couple of crew members and everything, the scene really comes to life here for that, so that's really nice. Here we got a snake eye, bunch of builds down there with the boys. Let's see, I haven't seen a Lincoln cameo yet, but I know he's gonna be in here. Just look at all those kids together there, that's awesome. With some crew and pilots. We've got a little Mark 44 action up there, the Scout Flyer. It's one thing that I hope that uh, either Wave or Hasegawa will come out with some of the flying units, like like this one or like the Hornets, something like that it would be nice. But this is a pretty cool one. Very interesting design here. Much more kind of bare bones, kind of skeletal design here for this one. Really cool scene here with this, having the crew member on it like while it's kind of hovering there. It's pretty nice. Here we got the raccoon. Uh, another one of my favorites. I do really like the raccoon just uh, as a suit. Just the added parts for that are really nice. Ah yes, the diving type. Another really nice one here. This one is 120 scale. Plastic model kit, snake eye, conversion, the diving parts. So I'm not sure if the conversion set is something that is available as like a resin set. I'm not sure, and it probably says in here. Uh, but that would be another thing that would be cool if we could get this out as a plastic model. If Wave were to come out with that version, that would be really awesome. We got the Super Survival Racers Go Go West. It's a scratch build here from Max. That's pretty interesting, sort of like a uh, Mad Max, BattleBots type feel with that. So interesting, not anything that's like a Canon Machine Krieger, I don't believe, but uh, just something separate. Got the Super Jerry and Variant Super Jerry. Not one of my favorite designs, <laughs> so I know it doesn't really matter, you know, which of these designs are ones that I personally like or dislike, just kind of sharing that with you guys. Super Jerry has not really been one of my favorites. It's kind of sort of like I don't know, very odd, I don't know, the shape of it. Maybe I just don't have the proper appreciation for it yet. Maybe someday, I don't know. Maybe if we get a new kit of it or something, uh, that'll make me appreciate it more once I put one together, maybe. We got a Kuster Friedrich. Uh, Kuster and Friedrich here kind of together, anyway. Uh, with the snake, cam uh, snake painting scheme on that. I'm not sure the story behind that, but I'm sure there is one. This is really cool. I'm not sure if I've ever seen this before. It's a like a custom variant of the Croat, but it looks like sort of it's like a Lunigan's like body there with like the Croat head, and it looks like it's more like a reconnaissance type version of that. I don't know. Very ooh, very interesting though. I like that a lot. Next, the Kaz. Another really cool design. I love the uh, radar fins there on it. Yeah, some Mark 44s over here. And let's see, speaking of reconnaissance types, there's a reconnaissance type snake eye over here on this side. And the Mark 44 ammo knights section here for this robot battle five. 
And some other interesting designs here as well. And the painting there for the Mark 44 a double set kit that came out not too long ago. Here we have another larger scale version with a 120 scale Luna Diver Stingray. The plastic model kit is 135th scale, so this one is a resin kit. I'm sure if you can find one <laughs> these days, it's got to be a very expensive resin kit because it's quite big. And I love how uh, Max put it on like a, a lamp arm here, one of those lamp arms that you can like move around as the display for that. So that's pretty cool. It's screwed in to the back down there, if you can see that. So this model has got to be very large. And here you can see it compared uh, with the 135th scale one. And the 135th scale kit is big, and this one is that much larger. So it's pretty, it's got to be a pretty big kit. It's really cool how you have like the standard hatch, which the 135th scale kit has, and then like a larger hatch that opens up for this one. We're revealing a lot more kind of like inner detail there, which is, that's really awesome. We've got some Dan board over here, classics, some of the other figures, uh, the 120 scale. Uh, resin figures, the sea pig, the snake eye reconnaissance type here. Ah yes, the banana boat. That's a 135th scale banana boat resin kit for 69,000 yen. Wow. There's also a 176 scale version of it right there as well. Anyway, both of those, though, I mean, the, that's pretty awesome. Those would be really cool. Some love love garden. Uh, figures down here. Those are really nice as well. I'd be interested to know like the backstory of uh, Yotsuba and Danboard kind of being involved. I'm sure it's just like a an interest of Koyokama-san's, I, but I don't know because there's also a, a 120 scale like little figure of Yotsuba uh, that's more like a realistic version of her that's sold as like a Machining Krieger uh, branded 120 scale resin figure. So yeah, I'm not sure what the origin of that is, but it's kind of interesting anyway. Here we have a conversation between Max and Koyokama-san. I guess that might be it, <laughs> these two pages here. I was expecting that goes on, but uh, it's just then back to the news. But there's a cool little bit there. If we could just get that translated, it would be awesome. Anyway, well, I'm guessing it's uh, AMA or AMA. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce, but that uh, it says here these are machine career modeler Amas works. So I'm guessing that's what this section is of these couple of pages here. Because the next section here is Machine Career Modeler Kaneyuki's works, but this also says that this is modeled by Max Watanabe. So I'm not sure, maybe Kaneyuki was just the designer for these models, maybe? And the actual models here are done by Max. But yeah, that's why it would be nice to translate this stuff so we can actually read everything but like I said for me the most enjoyable part of these books is just all the images of the model kits themselves uh, you know knowing all the kind of backstory information about everything uh, is really cool to know and interesting but you know just from a modeling standpoint just kind of seeing the works and everything just as like reference material is is the most useful thing I mean I just enjoy seeing them and it's just really nice to get a bunch of photos of different color schemes and different themes for the builds and just kind of how everything's all executed for different types of builds and different color schemes and camo patterns, things like that. Here's Lincoln down there showing off the Machine Krieger Modeling Book 2. I think that was one of the first books, uh, one of the first Machine Krieger books that I featured here on my channel, I believe. I think it was the first book that I had, I believe, if I remember correctly. Here's Machine Krieger Modeler Heels Works, so that'd be Saito Heel of Love Love Garden. Here he is pulling his signature face. This is going to be so like some of the Love Love Garden stuff, of which there's mostly just like these different figures and stuff that are available. I'm sure you guys have maybe seen them around. The Black Knight is a pretty cool variant there of the Ammo Knight. I like that one quite a bit. Next we have Machine Krieger Modeler Sedo's Works. These are some pretty interesting ones. Uh, let's see. This guy here reminds me a lot of something out of Half-Life 2, I gotta say. It's quite an interesting version of that design there. Some more Oscar action here. And that's really cool with like the extra armor panels added on this version of the Oscar. That's quite nice. I like that. 
some work in progress images here not a whole lot in this book that's one thing that i do wish that these books had was more work in progress images but the uh, machine career modeling books are better for that if you guys are looking for more stuff like that like actual like modeling work in progress images and stuff like that the machine career modeling book one and book two are much better for that these these books are more of just like a showcase of the models and like a history of everything which is good for that. Here we have some of Kato-san's works, uh, who is behind Rainbow Egg. I know who that is. Uh, some really interesting works here on these. You can see there's like a quite definite style uh, with these works, just like how they're painted, how they're finished. You can tell there's you know a preferred style with them, which is interesting. Here, I'm not sure who Kevin is, but here's some of Kevin's works. Kevin Durkin. Yeah, not somebody that I'm familiar with, but obviously one of the only foreigners to appear here aside from Lincoln, but there they are together with Lincoln there at the bottom. And there he is with his uh, SAFS snowman tattoo there on his arm, so pretty cool. These are some of his works, quite interesting takes on some of the machine career designs, like customized here, obviously you have like the skull croat here, uh, an extended canon version of that, and like quite dark kind of theme on these builds, interesting. Another section here about the Black Knight, and I'm just realizing that we're coming towards the end of the book here, and I said I was not gonna go through the entire book, but we have, so, I mean, I've just kind of been skimming through a lot of everything. There's obviously a lot in here, a lot of content, but hopefully this kind of relatively short overview through everything has been interesting for you guys. Here's the Lancelot. They're quite a, kind of quite interesting design. It's got a very weird, claw hand and weird alien head but I don't know it's one that's definitely grown on me in more recent years it's one that I never kind of used to really care too much for but I find it quite interesting now here we got a new rally pawn as well some space scenery there and as we're coming to the end of the book just want to say Thank you guys for checking out the video. Like I said before, if you've not seen uh, my videos on the first three books in this series, you can check those out and other books that I've reviewed of Machine Krieger and other things. All my book reviews are all in a playlist here on my channel. So if you guys are just interested in videos like this, taking a look at some different hobby mooks out of Japan, you can check out that playlist. There's a lot of good stuff in there. But I think that's just about gonna do it here at the end a lot of great builds in this one i really really am happy with this one it's a really great addition to this series the archive series has been great so far and this is another great addition to that with it being the largest of them so far there's just a ton of content in here as we get some very interesting uh, custom builds right at the very end some very different weird stuff, non-canon stuff I would imagine, but just some interesting like custom builds. And that's gonna be it. A few more modeling books there from Koyok Amasan at the end. And that's gonna do it for this video guys. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. But for now, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see y'all later. Have a great day. Bye guys.